Yeah. Well, let and, me you know, ask y'all this though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let, let me change subject and ask you this. Tell everyone kind of how each of you got started collecting All right. and what age you were. Walk okay. us through the path of how this happened <laughs> and yeah. up to today. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. I, 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 I really yeah. want to know. I remember, so for me, I remember I used to go to this after school program. It was called Drop In. Um, and it was, I remember it was like a dollar a day. It was the alternative to like the YMCA at the time. And I used to bring my binder of cards and, you know, we didn't, we didn't care about what kind of condition it was. It was just having that card. Um, and I remember Kobe, I saw, must have been in fourth, fifth grade, Kobe, he was a rookie. So it was about that time. Um, and I remember I was just all, I just held on to Jordans. Every time I got a chance to get a Jordan, I would make any trade that I needed to make to get my Jordan card. Uh, and then I remember one day, one of the, one of the leads, they called him, his name was Bishop. And he remember, he's like, yeah, you know, this Kobe guy, he's going to eat. They say he's going to be the next Jordan. And I was like, the next Jordan, like there's, there's no, there's not never going to be another player like Jordan. Yeah. So anyways, this kid on the playground, long story short, he, he wanted one of my Jordan cards and I don't, I don't remember which card it was specifically. Um, but it was for Kobe. So I, I didn't know much about Kobe at the time. I knew he was going to be good. I knew, I remember hearing a little bit about the buzz and some of the kids wearing those Adidas shoes. I remember the, they were, I thought they were the ugliest shoes. At the time. Oh, I thought they were <laughs> ugly. And in terms of that, they were uncomfortable. You're clunky. Yeah, they're 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 yeah. 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 And that was another thing too. I, I like as a kid, I don't know how, why this played a decision or had any sort of impression on me, but the fact he was wearing Adidas, I didn't like that. Cause it was all, I did. you know, it was all Nike. It was all Jordan. I remember I had the Griffies at the time. I was rock. I was rocking heavy with Nike, so just seeing Adidas was just kind of weird. And then the Moon Shoes came out. But anyways, that was a real start for me of getting into collecting. Was on the playground at the after school program and just making just random deals, and then coming home telling my parents, my dad about it. Um, and he was, I'm sure he didn't care much at the time, but I remember if it was just that 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 cool feeling of like almost be, being an investor, you know, or uh, yeah. the best. I think the best way to describe it now is like almost like being a recruiter, you know, recruiting talent and um, being speculative on this new kid, Kobe. And that was that was my first really introduction to the card game. All right. All yeah. Right. What about you, Wiley? Like that. Uh, so I was I was always collecting. And I think my my dad saw that at a really early age, whether if it was like collecting coins of something or uh, collecting rocks from outside even at like you know three or four years old there was always something about collecting with me and i remember i would go to the dentist and he introduced me to like marvel cards you okay. know like uh which was not, not back in like 90 i want to say like 1990 when they first came out 1990 1991 uh, i was born in 1985 so i was like five or six years old and it was about the time to get my teeth pulled I still remember it. It's wild because I'm like, my kids are that age now. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And I'm like, oh, I, I better be careful with what I'm doing because they're going to remember these things. Because I remember. They will remember. Yes, yeah. Sir. And I remember my first ever pack of cards was actually a, like, one of those Propel um, X-Men cards. And um, what's it called? I was five or six years old. And then my dad was like, all right, you got to get your teeth pulled today. I can't do anything about it or else you're just going to keep being in pain. And he goes, I'll tell you what, if you get through the whole thing, I'm going to buy you a couple packs from this card store, this comic store right next door. I'm like, cool, let's do it. So I agreed to it, obviously. And then as soon as I get out of the dentist, we walk right next door to the comic store. He buys me three or four of these packs of Propel. And then from that point on, the obsession of trying to collect sets and being able to like kind of do the research on why these cards have a certain value um, led into really the whole sports aspect of it. Um, because right after that, as soon as I turned seven or eight years old, I started playing a lot of rec ball. I was never inside. I always had a basketball or football with me. Uh, so, and I grew up in LA. Um, so I, I grew up watching the Lakers and my first ever PC was really Eddie Jones. You know, like I used oh, to yeah. love Eddie Jones. I used to love collecting his cards. Um, but you know, we didn't have a lot of money back then. So I could, I had to settle for like the collector's choice and the lower end brands. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was just fun being able to try to, you know, save up some money and try to get a pack of cards. But Eddie Jones was my first collect. 
until, you know, just like Alex was saying, freaking Kobe Bryant comes up. And I was different. Like, I actually liked the reason that I started liking him more because he, he was wearing Adidas. And uh, mm-hmm. what's it called? It was probably because I couldn't afford a Nike back then. You know, I couldn't afford Nikes back then. So I'm like, well, I could rock with this guy. It was it was Adidas <laughs> and I could, you know, I'm like, I could afford Adidas. I could afford uh, Converse right now. I can't afford Nike. So I'm like, all right, let me, this guy is cool. And um, ever since then, ever, you know, ever since I pulled my first Kobe card, it was always just like, I need every single one of his cards. This guy is just so fun to watch. And it just made, uh, like, it just made me even, you know, just uh, what's, enjoy it more every time I'd watch the game because I feel like I own stock in his, in his, in his play. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, oh, he scored 30 points. Oh, he scored 15 points. Oh, he had a bad game. It's like my emotions were going around with my cards as well too, you know. Um, but that was like my first memory of collecting cards was really the X-Men cards that same behavior went into mm. me directly into sports just because I never left the house without some sort of like basketball or football in my hand. And I'm really bad at both sports. So I don't know why. <laughs> I <even did> that. <laughs> but I tried, I tried uh, hard though. <laughs> well, I know when we were kids, the, those who were walking down the street bouncing a basketball, they could not play. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was yeah. that kid, you know, I was that kid. Yeah, Wiley. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah. how do you base those, some of your decisions when you're purchasing something at the end? And what is it that you're looking at, looking to buy right now? What are some of the things you're looking at? Now. So I'm looking at kind of where has the car been historically? So so I may look back 12 to 18 months. What's the cur- what's the uh, slope of the line on the curve of that car? Where is the car going? What's happening with it over time? Uh, then that gives me an indicator of where, where's the right time to buy. So I may have some cars, that, like some of the stuff that we talked about. That, that may be some cars that I'm thinking about, but I'm still doing research on. And then some may bump up into this may be the time to buy that car. So I need to yeah. understand what that is. And then what are the cars that I want to purchase and why? Like I try to spend more time on something that may be rare than other cars. It could oh, be yeah. population. It could be a, a, a printed car with a number of the uh, the print run is actually on the card. And then who is the player? Where is that player's career going? Then I start look. I start actually doing a lot of research, watching that person play. Like yeah. I, I, I throw in the actual uh, sport uh, view. What, what do my eyes tell me when I'm watching this person play their respective mm-hmm. sport? And then do they remind me of someone? I started asking a lot of questions. And I've, I've uh, talked to other people where I may ask the question, like, who does that player remind you of? <laughs> just, just to understand, where is their career kind of going? What attributes? Uh, if they're a point guard, what do they do as a point guard that somebody else may have done in the past? If they're a player that has their own game, like somebody would ask that about Michael Jordan, right? He kind of has his own game. When Shaq came out, somebody asked that. He's kind of doing his own thing. Then I put them, I go through a whole thing, Alex. I put them in a whole nother realm of analysis now because they're their own kind of player. But then how do, how does their career progress? Are they going to the Pro Bowl? Are they going to an all-star game? Are there points when they get to the playoffs, if they're playing basketball, do they increase or do they decrease? If I have a player that's 17 points a game, does he go down to 13 because he went to the playoffs? Uh, does Can he help or she help their team win something? If you start checking all those boxes, then you be you're getting into a legendary status, and I'm really going to start understanding where your car is going. This do you ever really factor in the market, like the marketability like of a certain player? Like, do oh you yeah, ever market, like, to yeah. me, marketability and likability are very important. We yeah. before y'all got on, we were talking about Tim Duncan, right? Tim Duncan is a mm. player that historically didn't want to go to a press conference and talk to people. He kind of had a <laughs> phobia of that, and he's talking yeah. about that. He worked to get better at that. But it's still not the level of a LeBron James who socially can be out and talk to people and do certain things that you really won't see Tim Duncan doing. So that kind of stuff affects. Like you talk about a Steph Curry, right? He's very marketable. He says the right things. He approaches things the right way. He's doing work in the community. When you start checking all those boxes, that's a player that Mm -hmm. I believe you can latch on to for a a long term because they're going to do stuff in the future that matters even after they get off the court. Like, I foresee Steph Curry, LeBron James doing major things off the court when they're done with sneakers on their feet. Oh, yeah. 
that's like, like back to what Alex was saying earlier is that we all become like, this is where it becomes really fun as a collector. Mm -hmm. You get to become a recruiter. Yeah. You know, like Alex said it earlier, it was perfect when he said, oh, you, you get to be recruiters now. We get to kind of judge the talent and put our own money where we feel like it's going to be best. That's right. And, you know, I mean, this is an investment of some sort, whether if it's a PC that you want to hold on to and give to your kids or something you want to hold on to until the playoffs. But uh, ultimately, it's something that you're putting your money where your mouth is, right? When it comes down to what you're actually buying. That's and right. that's when it becomes really fun. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. You know, that's why try not to buy anything you don't understand. Like for me, that's I'm not going to touch soccer because I don't understand it. Yeah. You know, and, and mm -hmm. Alex tried to get me into it. I'll even probably join join a couple of breaks to kind of try to understand it. But mm -hmm. it didn't catch my interest enough. I'm like, man, I but I, re I just keep gravitating towards basketball. I keep going towards yeah. uh, what's it called um, towards UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, so understanding your lane where you want to stay is is OK. There's nothing wrong with. Nothing having wrong to go it. to other than that you can just stick to one lane and there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with it and that's the cool thing yeah. about collecting because there's so much out there so that much everybody that you can yeah. find what really interests you and then get into it and start understanding the nuances of it and then you should be good to go but i think a lot of collectors if i like basketball and alex may tell me about soccer and i know nothing about soccer and then he tells me well, you should go buy XYZ player. Then I go yeah. buy that player. And yes, my maybe my expectations on return are different analysis, right? So mm -hmm. he may find someone that he's like, okay, I think that's a good investment. He makes it, he's good with the return that he gets. This other person may be like, Oh, I was expecting more. Yeah. Then they're a little bitter when that doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, it's time. almost like giving you like financial advice, yeah. you know, yes. like you know, when yeah. stock is like you want well, to I do the disclaimer. Like 10x, no. uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll never, I'll never advice. say some shit. Not financial advice, 